Hey y'all, it's Vintage Vinny, and welcome to another flea market haul. I went to a bunch of places that I hadn't been to before in PA when I was out in the Adamstown area, and I found a little cool place to check out, and I'm really happy that I did because I spent a lot of money and I found some great stuff. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. So I paid $10 for this Ivy clock made by West Clocks. It's originally from the AIM store. Was that a craft store back in the day, or was that like just like a, a discount retailer? You all have to let me know in the comment section below, because I've heard of it, I just never knew what it was. And originally it sold there for 30 bucks. If you hear some popping in the background, I apologize. We've got some people doing some fireworks here in my small town. So this is brand new and sealed. Um, I do remember my grandparents having this clock in their family room when I was little. So that probably prompted me to buy it. And then of course I looked it up to make sure that it was worth buying and I went ahead and bought it, of course, because it's sitting right in front of me. Um, I am sending it into Amazon for about $150. I don't know that it's gonna sell for that. And since this is sealed, I'm probably gonna put an extra layer of saran wrap over it, just so that way, it, cause you know how the warehouses are, things happen, things get poked. So I, I'll add a couple layers of that over this so that way it doesn't get torn into. So that was an interesting pickup. So this was one of the first bigger items that I spotted in one of the flea market booths. I did end up spending $10 on it. It came with a, or it was inside of a like bigger picture. And of course I only wanted this picture here of the, it looks like they're pumping gas or putting gas into the ground for the pump. So that was really cool. I did take a shot in the dark on it because I'm not exactly sure if it's old. More than likely it is. Here's what the back looks like. Let me know what you all think. Did I waste $10 or do you think I got a really neat old photograph? For $2 a piece, I got two copies of the Modern Man magazine. One is from May 1953, so that predates Playboy by a few months. And I also got Man from November of 1952. As you can see, the front page is ripped so you can't see the pretty girl's face. And the cover is completely gone on this one. But that is totally okay because the content in here is still very, very cool. Paid only a dollar for this Las Vegas Casino Corner Craps game. Brand new and sealed from 1994. Unfortunately, two of the batteries are missing. I think they may have fallen out and gone behind the console, but I'm not exactly sure. Paid only a buck. It was originally from Value City for, I think, like maybe five bucks or something like that. There is one listed on Amazon. No FBA offers, so I will probably be sending this in for about $30. After fees, I'll probably net about $20, so I'll be out, or I'll have a $19 profit is what I was trying to say. So that wasn't too bad for a dollar. For only $5, I picked up a 1963 Barbie and Ken case. I thought that was a pretty fair price considering what other people try to charge for them. Now, as you can see, there is some damage here. And where's the other side? There's damage back here too, but that's perfectly okay because this thing is 58 years old. So to find it in the shape that it's in, I'd say overall was pretty darn good. Before we check out the small goods from the flea market, I did stop in one tiny little antique store in a tiny little town. Didn't have very much to offer in terms of like knickknacks and tchotchkes. They had a lot of glass. Uh, the store was mainly primitives and all that like handmade like stacks of glass, like miscellaneous plates and things like that. All stacked into like garden art. That's the word I was trying to think of. And so I didn't walk out with much, but I was happy that I was able to find a couple things and support the small business on that Friday. So I did pay $7.50 for this really adorable, I think this is supposed to be just like a, I don't know if it's supposed to be an ashtray, because I don't think an ashtray would have all this like faux carpeting on it, but it's still really, really cute. 
in my future home, I do plan on having like skunks and things in my bathroom. I'm sure Skunky Junk Sean is probably drooling over this piece right now. Again, he was $7.50 and I did look him up before I purchased him and someone has one listed for $15, so I got a good price at paying half of that. So I had to have him. Also for, I believe I paid $2.55, I got three tin eggs here. I really like the art on them. I think one of them says, oh, did that just take it out of focus? Uh, they're from Albert and Son in New York. So these are after 1963. So I would say late 60s, possibly early 70s. But I absolutely love them and only pay $2.55 for three of them. I felt that that was a steal of a deal. So how this flea market was set up is, you know, obviously there's different spaces with different people's things. And because I'm so used to one of the indoor fleas that we have, that's about like, 20 minutes from me where you just go in, grab a basket, go through the different spaces, find what you want, and just move on. In this case, you had to pay each individual vendor if they were there. And if they were not there, you had to go to the kitchen to pay the manager of this building. So I went into it with that mindset of, you know, you go to each vendor and then you go to the cashier and buy it all at once. No, it wasn't like that. So... And of course I walked in there without cash, so I had to go to the bank that was literally right down the street, and then I came back and spent a lot of money, <laughs> which I'm sure these people were thrilled about. So yeah, I had to get kind of used to the, the way they do things there, because you know, every place is different, but a little bit more on the unusual side, I guess you could say. Anyway, so let's go ahead, and this is the last larger item before I show you all my smaller stuff. So this was sitting amid a bunch of tools. Um, it was originally $45, then they marked it down to 10, and I guess because it got more damaged over time, they marked it down to three bucks, and that's when I bought it. It's a bear drinking. At first I thought it was like an otter, but the ears are missing off of the bear, and some of his fur's coming off. I believe he's made in Japan, but I just couldn't leave him behind because look at that. This would look just great displayed behind a bar. Yep, it does say Japan. I haven't put some batteries in it to see if it works yet, but I felt bad leaving them, and because you don't see these toys very often, we'll see if I can get them to work. I don't know if I will, but uh, for $3, I took a shot in the dark. Okay, so we are now moving into the smaller goods for this portion of the haul. Paid $3 for this really awesome turkey planter. I would say this is probably brushed McCoy or maybe even Shawnee. It's definitely not Royal Copley because Royal Copley has the um, raised legs or the raised feet on the bottom. So I will definitely be saving that for one of my fall themed sales, probably early on so that way you guys have this for Thanksgiving. I did buy a whole stack of switch plate covers and outlet covers. Uh, it was $6.00. Actually, I think it was $6.00 for all these, and then she decided to throw all these in. And these are from 1967 and 1968. I think anybody who was doing Shabby Chic or even Boho, these would look great with Boho houses. They are marked 1967 American Tack and HWE Company. So that's what the light switch covers are marked. And I believe that the... Yes, the outlet covers are marked 1968 by the same company. Not exactly sure what these will bring. Um, I'm thinking maybe somewhere along the lines of maybe $30, $35. I think I can get that for these because like I said, anybody who's doing shabby chic or boho will definitely love these. And the other ones that lady threw in were this one, which is plastic. It's got an eagle on it. That one was made, doesn't say a year, but it just says JW Field Co. in New York City. That one's plastic. And then we've got this one, which is, I think it said either Japan or something on it. But it's got a really nice ornate look to it. So I will probably be selling that one individually. And then this one is brand new in the packaging. It's by Pearl Made by the Pendle Home Products Manufacturing Corp, which was in New York City. It is after 1963 because of the five-digit zip code. 
but I am sure somebody out there is looking to have new old stock hardware like I just showed you all with the set of switch plate covers. So I am excited to get those listed and sold to somebody who really wants them. So these three items came from one person. I did pay $7 for the three. I was in a buying mood, so I just said, what the heck? So I got this keychain here. It's for Kool-Aid. I would say it's probably from the 70s or the 80s. Beat the Thirsties with Kool-Aid. And then in that same booth, I also saw this Beatles card. It's pretty beat up, so it's probably not oops, worth all that much money. It's the second series through number er, or number 61 through number 115, number 83, TCG printed in USA. That'll more than likely just go into my ephemera book along with all my other Hollywood celebrity type stuff. So we got, gosh, I have a hard time recognizing them. I can recognize John and Paul. I think that's Ringo and that's George. Yep. Paul, John, George, Ringo. And then we've got this silhouette here of some people, or like some kids playing in a field or something. Definitely older, because you can tell by the frame. So I had to have that. And I felt that that was a fair price, $7 for the three items. In one of the booths that I visited, or actually it was a room, it was mainly like a bunch of primitives and newer items, which is very popular in the country where I am. Just not popular with me, personally. Anyway, he had a whole section of different old bottles, and then I found these tape tins. I paid $3 a piece for them. And I got two of the Scotch tape tins with the plaid, and then I got this Texel one for $3 as well. So $9 for the total. I usually like to ask about $8 or $9 a piece for these at my live sales, so those were a really good pickup. So these came from two different vendors. Um, I got a Tiki glass, now the only reason I picked this up is because it says Orchids of Hawaii, Japan. These tiki cups, if you can find them, uh, made in Japan, they can be quite collectible. Actually, tiki's always been a very hot thing. I actually bought a set of four J.P. Marshall peanut tiki glasses at one of my peddler malls for 10 bucks, and I sold them for 50 bucks. That is crazy. And these two were interesting. The lady who was selling them kind of talked me into buying them. They're anatomically correct beer glasses. Here's the lady, here's the man. We know the difference between men and women, so we won't have that conversation. Uh, they are for, I think this is a German beer. It says Der Klugi Umzug, and I'm sure I'm butchering that. I'm sure all my fellow followers who speak German are laughing at my in my face right now because I butchered that. So the lady there talked me into these. It's thinner glass, so I assume it's probably older. Just don't know how old. I'm thinking maybe 60s, 70s, when that kind of stuff was really in. But yeah, she showed them to me, and I, she talked me into buying them for five bucks. I don't know how I got myself into it, but I, or talked myself into it, but yeah, I did. Okay, moving along now. So I did get a set of Venus de Milo Bust Salt and Pepper Shakers. Uh, originally the lady had seven on them and she said I could have them for five. Those will go with my Salt and Pepper Shaker collection that I didn't really need to start but did anyway. And I also got this girl. Now, I actually had a music box a while back with her on it. It was from 1971. So that's when I assume this girl is from. It is a Lefton. Paid a dollar for her. Made in Japan, I looked it up just to see if it was worth anything, and I think two of them sold for 15 if I'm not mistaken. So maybe I'll list this one for 12 Or maybe I'll even list it for 15 and see what happens. Got this September Boy. It's an angel. And he was also a dollar. He's National Potteries Corporation in Cleveland, also known as Napco Ware. I assume this is probably from the 50s or 60s. I don't know if Chapter 2 collects this line of angels, because I know she likes the girls, but I don't know if she likes the boy angels. Alex, if you're watching, let me know. Do you like the boy angels too, or do you like just the girls? The girl birthday angels. And these were also a dollar a piece. I just like the patriotic look of this girl. Ponytail. I don't know who made them. It's probably just one of those, like, made-in-Japan tin 
tea sets, but I just thought they were fun for 4th of July or any patriotic holiday. So we are nearing the end of this epic flea market haul, and I saved my favorite pieces for last. I did pick up a set, or two sets actually, of elephants on chains. This one right here I did pay $10 for. Uh, the mama is less heavier than the babies. The babies are pretty heavy. I'm going to see if I can try to take that 29 off, maybe with a magic marker, and see if it removes it. So that's really cool. This set I only paid $5 for. The white elephant with the red stripes. This one is made by Pacific Japan. I'm really digging the kitschiness of it. It would look great at Christmas time. And I just think that they are really, really fun pieces. And who doesn't love a kitschy piece? Let's be real here. All right, and my two favorite pieces from this haul happen to be these really awesome snowman salt and pepper shakers. I only paid $2 for them. I've seen them at some of my local antique stores here, and I think somebody has the exact same set and they want like $9 for them. I'm like, no. So I'm happy I waited and found them for only two bucks. They do look a little clowny, so Misty, if you're watching, I'm really sorry. I know that clowns freak you out. And the last item that I found is this really awesome Irish shamrock hat made by Relpo. Paid only $3 for it. Now, as you can see, there is a chip right here on the rim of the hat, but you know what? Vintage St. Patrick's Day stuff is really hard to find, so I'm perfectly okay with it having some issues. And plus, I didn't even see it when I bought it. I just got really excited. And there is the Relpo Mark Japan. So when you see vintage St. Patty's Day stuff and it is cheap, regardless if it's got a piece of damage like that on it, pick it up because you just don't see it. So that is everything that I would like to share with you all today. Let me know down below what's your favorite item or favorite items I shared in this haul. So that's all I have for you today. Be sure and give this video a big thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure and click the bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to get notified when new videos are uploaded. Be sure and check me out on Instagram. The link to it is down below as well, where you will see pictures of items to come in future haul videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Bye, guys.